when the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, and Herod the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Since we've been reviewing end time prophecy, our spiritual eyes are able to see through the falsehoods religion presented to us as truth. The remnant that is being called out of the beast religion is starting to see through the false hope the doctrines of devils from religion have given to the people that are deceived by them. As the Most High open our spiritual eyes with truth, the spiritual wickedness in high places are doing everything in their power to make the beast religion appear to be solid. Because the road that leads to destruction is massive, you will always encounter people who support the beast religion and its doctrines. It does not matter how many scriptures is provided in every message. There will always be people that can't see past the doctrines of devils. The strong delusion is at hand fulfilling end time prophecy. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Everything written must be fulfilled. If Israelites and the indigenous black people would view religion for what it is, which is witchcraft and idolatry, then they would start to seek deliverance from the stronghold religion has over their life. As much as I would like to see everyone delivered from religious bondage, it wasn't given for all people to know the mysteries. Because of the strong delusion upon all who reject the truth, the road that leads to destruction is massive. To the remnant, it's extremely important not to allow yourself to become overly emotional about the population of the wicked. Everyone is not going to inherit the kingdom. The remnant needs to understand this truth to save yourself from loneliness, emotional breakdowns, and anxiety. The authorized Bible have multiple scriptures warning us of how it's only a remnant. The awakening should be a testimony for everyone to see there's only a remnant that will return to serve the most high in the spirit and in truth. The remnant shall return, even the remnant of Jacob, unto the mighty God. For though thy people Israel be as the sand of the sea, yet a remnant of them shall return. The consumption decreed shall overflow with righteousness. The remnant must use discernment to recognize the people that are predestined. Right now, everyone is infatuated with the truth. There's a lot of people that want to know more. To the Israelites and Gentiles that are privileged to hear the truth and understand, make sure your life is balanced. While you're taking advantage of the truth, also make preparation for what the truth brings. There's a lot of people enjoying the truth. However, make sure to listen to what the truth is revealing. A lot of people appreciate the prophecy about the gospel of the kingdom will be heard in all nations as a witness. A great majority of people are overlooking a very important part in the prophecy. After the truth is heard, the end have come. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. Israelites, that is why I say, make sure you prepare for what is coming after the truth is heard. The Most High is reviewing end time prophecy to prepare you for what is coming next. Although the truth is liberating, we must prepare for what is coming after the truth is heard. If you have been reviewing end time prophecy with me for the past few months, you should know what is coming after the truth. The abomination of desolation, the men of sin will come. 
at the coming of the Antichrist, the great tribulation begins. Israelites, make sure to prepare for what is coming. Most people, when they hear prepare, majority of people make preparations to preserve their flesh. They start to store food and water. They try to find shelter that can keep them and their family safe. Israelites, the word of God said, whoever tried to save his or her life will lose it. And whoever lose his life for his sake shall find it. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. When the great tribulation began, the Antichrist will have power over the world. Power was given to him to war with the people of the Most High. For those of you that don't know about the Antichrist, he will war with nations and oppress everyone. In those days, in order for you to save your life, you have to submit to the beast system and worship the beast. That's the only way you will make it in those days. You will have to compromise yourself in order to save your life. That is why the Messiah said, if you try to save your life, you will lose it. However, if you stand firm and refuse to submit to the beast system, the spiritual wickedness in high places will kill you. In those days, the beast will kill everyone who will not worship the image of the first beast. In addition, if you don't have the mark of the beast, you won't be able to buy or sell. You will lose your life in those days if you stand firm. The Messiah said, if you lose your life for his sake, you will find it. At his second coming, he will raise you up. And this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. Everyone who compromised themselves won't be a part of the first resurrection, which is why you will lose your life if you try to save it. Israelites and Gentiles, when I say prepare, I'm not talking about preserving your flesh body. I'm talking about your spirit and your mind. The words of the Most High must be rooted in you to not fold. You have to be able to say to the unclean spirits that will encourage you to take the mark or worship the beast when you're discouraged to get behind me, Satan. You have to have the Holy Spirit abiding with you to bring all things to your remembrance when the famine of the word comes. When the word becomes scarce, you will be looking everywhere for the word and you won't find it. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. And they shall wander from sea to sea, and from the north even to the east. They shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord, and shall not find it. This is why you must partner with the Holy Spirit. You must understand the voice of the Most High through the Holy Spirit to stand firm in those days. You have to rely on the truth that was spoken to you in the time when the gospel of the kingdom was everywhere to encourage you. If your spirit is nourished with the word of the Most High, no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. When the Satans come with their offers, you will be able to see New Jerusalem and you will be able to rebuke the Satans and say to them, get behind me, Satan. I will worship the Most High and him only will I serve. Then saith Jesus unto him, get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shalt thou serve. As the word of God did, we must do. All of us who is standing firm need to know that you will be targeted, persecuted, and lose your life. Not too many people who teach are bold enough to tell you this truth. They want you to look at the end result. They want you to lust after the kingdom. They don't want you to know what you must go through in order to get there. They pacify the people with false doctrines that give them false hope to prevent you from seeing the truth. Religion lied and said, you won't go through anything because you will be raptured away to heaven. Because of religious falsehoods, a large population of people are unaware of what is coming their way. Israelites, you must live a balanced life. Take heed to the truth and prepare your mind and spirit for what is coming. Reviewing end time prophecy with truth will better prepare you for whatever the kingdom of darkness present to you. 
Israelites, make sure to put on the whole armor to stand against their falsehoods. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. The kingdom of the Most High is the most sought after place throughout history, as well as in the present awakening. Everyone in and out of religion wants to spend eternity in the coming kingdom. Every religion end result is to enter the Most High's kingdom. All of us who was raised in Christianity, we was taught that we must accept Jesus to spend eternity in the kingdom of heaven. For multiple years, we was led to believe the Messiah's kingdom was in the heavens. When the word of God became flesh, he informed his disciples that his kingdom was not of this world. Because the Messiah said this, most people accept the doctrine presented to them by the beast religion of heaven being the Messiah's kingdom. The kingdom given to the Messiah by the Most High is an everlasting kingdom that cannot be destroyed. If the Messiah's kingdom was of this world, then his kingdom would be destroyed when this earth and the first heaven pass away. The scriptures confirm this earth and the first heaven will pass away. The new earth and new Jerusalem that will come down from heaven is the kingdom that is not of this world. I saw in the night visions and behold, one like the son of man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the ancient of days and they brought him near before him. And there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. The scripture said, Dominion, glory, and a kingdom was given to the Messiah that cannot be destroyed and is everlasting. So many people confuse the Messiah's kingdom with the millennial reign. The millennial reign would be in this present earth. The millennial reign cannot be the Messiah's kingdom because his kingdom is not of this world. The millennial reign is for the righteous to inherit the earth according to the promises the Most High made to them. The kingdom that was given to the Messiah is not of this world. Once this earth and the first heaven pass away, the Most High said he will make all things new. There will be a new earth and new Jerusalem. And new Jerusalem is where the throne of the Most High and of the Lamb will be located. And there shall be no more curse. But the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. The scripture is revealed that the tree of life that will be given as food for the righteous is near the throne of the Most High in New Jerusalem. The tree of life is in the midst of the Garden of Eden, paradise. The new earth is the place the Messiah went to prepare for us. That's the kingdom given to the Messiah. The authorized Bible doesn't give us an account about what happened to the Garden of Eden after Adam and Eve was removed. Because of the lack of information in the scriptures about the Garden of Eden, many people created their own narrative to what could have happened to the Garden of Eden. The Most High had mercy on Adam and Eve and did not destroy the Garden. The Most High sent angels to upkeep the Garden. Then God had pity on them and showed them mercy and sent his angel to keep the garden. And there are 300 angels, very bright, who keep the garden and with incessant sweet singing and never silent voices serve the Lord throughout all days and hours. When the Messiah became flesh and fulfilled everything that was written about him in the laws, he said to his disciples that he was returning to the Father. The Messiah went on to say that where he's going, they couldn't go. The Messiah said that he was going to prepare a place for the righteous. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there. Ye may be also. Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. If the Messiah goes to prepare a place for the righteous, and the Messiah's kingdom is not of this world, 
and we know the Garden of Eden is the Messiah's kingdom. The Messiah gave us confirmation through the scriptures that the garden is not in this world. With the Messiah saying his kingdom is not of this world, this also indicates there are other realms. Paradise is not in this world, which is why it will come down from heaven. The Most High said to Enoch that he had endless realms. The scripture says Satan is the God of this world. That is how he's able to blind the minds of many. With Satan being the God of this world, let us know other worlds exist. The new earth that will come after this earth pass away is one of the many realms the Father created. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. The Garden of Eden, the new earth, is the place the Messiah went to prepare for the righteous to spend eternity. The Most High forbid Adam and Eve along with their children from entering the garden until the judgment are fulfilled. At the end of the world, the Most High will allow Adam, Eve, and the righteous of their children to enter the garden. Many of you through religion are led to believe the heavens is where the Messiah's kingdom will be. The new earth, the Garden of Eden, is the kingdom given to the Messiah. This is where the righteous will spend eternity. The book of Enoch chapter 25 said we would dwell in the new earth and live long lives like our fathers did before the flood and its fragrance shall be in their bones and they shall live a long life on earth such as thy fathers lived i shared the verse you just heard from the book of enoch to show you that whatever heaven religion promise is not the messiah's kingdom nor is the heavens the place we will spend eternity as you learn in previous messages, there are multiple heavens, and each heaven are occupied. The first heaven will pass away along with this earth. The scriptures clearly said we would live on earth, the new earth that will come. We must appreciate and bless the Most High for allowing us to know the truth. The Satans can no longer deceive us with their falsehoods. I am glad that the Most High is allowing the Holy Spirit to expose every doctrine of devil from religion that have been a stumbling block to all people that love the Most High. The new earth, the Garden of Eden, is the Messiah's kingdom. In the verse you just heard from the book of Enoch, mention the fragrance from the tree of life that will remain in the righteous bones. When the Most High allowed Enoch to explore his endless realms, when it came to the Garden of Eden, the angel who's the leader of the Garden of Eden explains to Enoch everything about paradise. The Garden of Eden in the book of Enoch is known as the Garden of Righteousness. And thence I went over the summits of all these mountains, far towards the east of the earth, and passed above the Arethian Sea, and went far from it and passed over the angels of Teal, and I came to the Garden of Righteousness. The Messiah's kingdom is the Garden of Righteousness, also known as Paradise, the Garden of Eden. The throne of the Most High will be in the middle of the new earth, which the scriptures call New Jerusalem in the authorized Bible. Enoch was given the opportunity to see the throne in the Garden of Righteousness. The angel that was with Enoch explained to Enoch that when the Most High come down to visit the earth, the throne that is in New Jerusalem, where the temple will be, is where the Most High will sit when he visit the earth. And the seventh mountain was in the midst of these, and it excelled them in height, resembling the seat of a throne, and fragrant trees encircled the throne. Then I answered him saying, I wish to know about everything, but especially about this tree. And he answered saying, This high mountain which thou hast seen, whose summit is like the throne of God, is his throne, where the Holy Great One, the Lord of glory, the eternal King, will sit, when he shall come down to visit the earth with goodness. And as for the fragrant tree, no mortal is permitted to touch it till the great judgment when he shall take vengeance on all and bring everything to its consummation forever. It shall be given to the righteous and holy. Its fruit shall be for food to the elect, 
It shall be transplanted to the holy place, to the temple of the Lord, the eternal King. Israelites and Gentiles, you just heard another scripture confirming the garden as our final resting place and not the heavens. The scripture said the Most High will come down to visit the earth. Keep in mind, this is the new earth. The scriptures you just heard in the book of Enoch confirm what we reviewed last week in the book of Revelation about the bride of the Lamb, New Jerusalem. The angel took John to a great and high mountain to show him New Jerusalem coming down from heaven. The scripture said the throne of the Most High and of the Lamb was in the midst of New Jerusalem by the tree of life. And there came unto me one of the seven angels which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues and talked with me saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree for the healing of the nations. The authorized Bible in the book of Revelation said there's no temple in New Jerusalem. The Most High and the Lamb would be the temple. The book of Enoch said the tree of life would be transplanted to the temple that is in New Jerusalem near the throne of the Most High. The fragrant tree, which is the tree of life, would be food for the elect. I share this with you for you to decide for yourself on what you believe. The scripture said, we are the temple that housed the spirit of the most high. Before our people was exiled, we had a temple. The heavens have a temple. I'm not sure why the authorized Bible said there won't be a temple in New Jerusalem. And I saw no temple therein. For the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. The Garden of Eden is the Messiah's kingdom. This is the place the most high promised to give to the righteous. In the middle of the garden in New Jerusalem is the throne of the Most High and of the Lamb, according to the book of Revelation. The angel that answered Enoch's questions about the garden of righteousness revealed to Enoch that the high throne was for the Most High. The angel explained to Enoch that the throne is where the Most High would sit when he visited the earth. The authorized Bible said it was the throne of the Most High and of the Lamb. By now, we all should know the Most High don't share his glory with anyone. The kingdom was given to the Messiah. The Most High, the Father, gave the Messiah dominion and glory. The Messiah is the leader in the coming kingdom. The throne in the midst of the garden belongs to the Father. The Messiah himself said this out of his own mouth. The angel that explained everything about the garden of righteousness to Enoch was Michael. The scripture in the book of Enoch said he was the leader in the garden of righteousness. Then I said, how beautiful is this tree and fragrant and its leaves are fair and its blooms very delightful in appearance. Then answered Michael, one of the holy and honored angels who was with me and was their leader. Michael, who is the word of God and the one many of you refer to as Yahshua when he was flesh, is the leader in the garden of righteousness. This is the same angel that has the keys to the gates of heaven and the key holder of the kingdom. Michael is also the angel that presents our prayers to the Most High. The angel takes Baruch to the next heaven, identify as the fifth heaven, where Baruch faces the closed gate upon which the names of men are inscribed. The gate opens only to admit the commander-in-chief, Michael, the key holder of the kingdom, descending from behind it with a great sound to receive the prayers of men. He holds a cosmically-sized bowl into which the virtues of men enter in order to be brought in it to God. This is the same angel that took Enoch into the presence of the Most High. It's the same angel that prayed with Adam when he offered his blood to the Most High for forgiveness of sins. It's the same angel that explained to Canaan, the father of Melchizedek, the calling the Most High had on his son's life to take the body of Adam to the middle of the earth. This is the same angel that stood with all of our fathers. 
And the angel of God said unto him, I am the angel who brought gold to thy father Adam when he was below the garden. I am the angel who prayed to God together with Adam when he offered his blood upon the altar. I am Michael, the angel who received the soul of Abel, the just. I am the angel who was with Seth when he was born in the cave. I am the angel who was with Enos and Canaan and Mahalalel and Jared and Enoch and Methuselah and Lamech and with Noah. Yet since he entered into rest, I stand by his firstborn son, Shem. The same angel that brought Levi, the son of Jacob, into the presence of the Most High. The same angel that is known as the angel of the Lord with the sword in the Old Testament. The same angel the Most High gave charge over you. The same angel that would deliver the righteous at the end of the great tribulation. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. But I will show thee that which is noted in the scripture of truth, and there is none that holdeth with me in these things, but Michael your prince. This is the same angel, the Most High called, his intercessor. And I will give thee, Enoch, my intercessor, the archistratage, Michael, for the handwritings of thy fathers, Adam, Seth, Enos, Canaan, Mahalalel, and Jared, thy father. Everywhere Yahshua, to some of you, Jesus, is supposed to be, Michael is there. I hope many of you are starting to make the connection. Only the people the Most High lead to his true begotten son will understand this truth. Remember, the Most High have to lead you to the Messiah. No man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me. Draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. Most people that are in denial about Michael are the people who was led to the Messiah that came in his own name in religion. The Most High, the Father, have to draw you to the Lamb. The Messiah said he would raise you up at the last day. Many of you know the Messiah as Jesus or Yahshua. Most of you who accepted Jesus or Yahshua as your Lord and Savior have no clue to who he was before he became flesh. Some of you don't even know him when he was flesh. Religion distorted the people's view of the Messiah. A great majority believe the Messiah just sits at the right hand of the Father all day long. He does nothing else besides sitting at the right hand of the Father. The Messiah's role is beyond sitting at the right hand of the Father. How can he be an intercessor if he doesn't engage with the people he intercede for? The Messiah, before he became flesh, interacted with our fathers as the angel of the Lord. The Messiah does more than sit at the right hand of the Father. The scriptures talk about the Messiah before he became flesh. Because many of you was led to the Messiah that came in his own name. You can't see the Messiah in the Old Testament as well as in the Apocrypha. When the Most High leads you to his only begotten son, then you will begin to see him everywhere. Dan, the son of Jacob and the progenitor to the tribe of Dan said, Give honor to the angel that intercede on our behalf. Dan went on to explain this angel is the mediator between God and men. And now fear the Lord, my children, and beware of Satan and his spirits. Draw near unto God and unto the angel that interceded for you. For he is a mediator between God and men. And for the peace of Israel, he shall stand up against the kingdom of the enemy. It doesn't get any clearer than the scriptures you just heard from the testament of Dan. Dan knew the Messiah was an angel as well as our intercessor and mediator. Those are the same roles given to the Messiah in the authorized Bible. How many of you know about the angel that intercede on your behalf? Most of you know a white man named Jesus that intercedes on your behalf. 
in the awakening, a great majority transformed that white man, Jesus Black, and continued to follow the Messiah that came in his own name. How will you be a part of the Messiah's kingdom if you don't know who the Messiah is? We are the end time generation living when the truth is being poured out as a witness to all nations before the end comes. Most Israelites and indigenous black people don't know who the only begotten son of the most high is. How will you be a part of his kingdom if you don't know him? It was written in the authorized Bible that the Messiah, whom many have rejected, will say at the judgment seat, I never knew you. Depart from me. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. A lot of people will say, I did this in your name and that in your name. The Messiah simply said, I never knew you. The Messiah is correct when he say, I never knew you. A great majority of you know the false Messiah that came in his own name. Israelites, it's important for you to know the identity of the real Messiah. Religion have lied to you about everything. What makes you believe the workers of iniquity didn't lie to you about the identity of the Messiah? Remember, the heathens are not going to teach you how to serve your God properly. Your deliverance means bondage and suffering for them. When you begin to serve the Most High in the Spirit and in truth, your oppressors will lose control over you. That is why religion was created to keep you in bondage and rebellion against your God. The longer you rebel, the longer the Satans have control over you. The hour have come for you to worship the Father in the spirit and in truth. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. We cannot talk about the Messiah's kingdom and not know who the Lamb of the Most High is. If you have been on this channel long enough, you will know the true Lamb of the Most High. Ever since the Most High led me to his begotten Son, I've been telling you about him since. If you're struggling with the truth, seek the Most High in sincerity. Fast and pray. Ask the Most High to give you confirmation. The Garden of Eden, the Book of Enoch referred to as the Garden of Righteousness, is the place the Most High prepared for the righteous in eternity. Enoch saw paradise and Enoch said it was an amazing place. Enoch even blessed the Most High after seeing the place the Most High prepared for the righteous. Then bless I, the God of glory, the eternal King, who has prepared such things for the righteous and has created them and promised to give to them. Every tree in paradise is blessed. The garden of righteousness is a blessed place. The Most High created us to be in the garden. The Messiah's kingdom is where we will spend eternity. The Most High gave to Adam the gift of priesthood, kingship, and the gift of prophecy. The Most High promised to restore Adam to bring him back into the garden. The Messiah, when he became flesh and overcame the kingdom of darkness, he restored Adam's kingship prophecy and priesthood then came a voice from the top of the coffin that said to Melchizedek and to Shem behold we are drawing near to the place our Lord has decreed for us and the voice said unto Melchizedek upon the land to which we are going shall the word of God come down and suffer and be crucified on the place in which my body is laid the crown on my head shall be baptized with his blood and then shall my salvation be wrought, and he shall restore me to my kingdom, and shall give me my priesthood and my gift of prophecy. Then the voice was silent by the power of God. At the end of it all, when the Most High reconciled everything back to him, 
Paradise, the Garden of Eden, will be home to the righteous. This is the desires of the Most High for the seed of Adam from the very beginning. If Adam and Eve didn't sin, we all would have been in the garden. The indigenous Black people's journey is a journey of redemption and reconciliation back to our God. The Satans, through the workers of iniquity, transform our redemption into a religion. The Most High will restore everything lost. When the word of God became flesh to fulfill what was written concerning him, he reconciled the righteous back to the Father. The place the Messiah went to prepare is the garden of righteousness. That's the kingdom you and I should be looking forward to be a part of. Heaven is the place Satan promised to all who follow him. Satan is an angel along with all the other angels that fell with him. They have access to the heavens because they are angels. They have the body that is suitable for the heavens. You and I don't. The fifth heaven is where the Satans dwell. The second is a prison for the fallen angels. Will Satan take all who follow him to heaven into total darkness in the second heaven or into silence in the fifth heaven? And those men took me and led me up onto the second heaven and showed me darkness greater than earthly darkness. And there I saw prisoners hanging, watch, awaiting the great and boundless judgment. And these angels were dark looking, more than earthly darkness, and incessantly making weeping through all hours. The men took me on to the fifth heaven and placed me. And there I saw many and countless soldiers called Gregories of human appearance and their size was greater than that of great giants and their faces withered and the silence of their mouths perpetual and there was no service on the fifth heaven and I said to the men who were with me wherefore are these very withered and their faces melancholy and their mouths silent and wherefore is there no service on this heaven and they said to me these are the Gregory who with their prince Sitanel rejected the Lord of light. And after them are those who are held in great darkness on the second heaven. And three of them went down onto earth from the Lord's throne to the place Ermon and broke through their vows on the shoulder of the hill Ermon and saw the daughters of men, how good they are and took to themselves wives and befouled the earth with their deeds, who in all times of their age made lawlessness and mixing and giants are born, and marvelous big men, and great enmity. The time have come to let the scriptures speak. Satan definitely don't have the power or the authority to bring anyone into the heavens, nor does he have the power and authority to save anyone's life. The Most High gave to us power and authority over the entire kingdom of darkness. How can he take us into the heavens when we have more power and authority than the Satan's? Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Israelites, that is why Satan hates the seed of Adam. He felt that we have taken his kingdom. Satan believed because he was created before us, we should bow to him. That is the root cause to the perpetual hatred we experience in this earth. The Messiah have all the power and authority because the Most High has put everything into the hands of the word of God. The Messiah has the power and authority to raise us up at the last day. All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. The Messiah also had the power and authority to give us rest in the garden of righteousness that was prepared for the righteous. There's a lot of talk about the coming kingdom. Israelites, make sure the kingdom that is popular with this world is the same kingdom the Most High promised to the righteous that serve him in the spirit and in truth. 
Remember, what is popular with this world is an abomination to the Most High. We have to use discernment at this time. Satan imitates everything the Most High does. It's through imitation Satan deceived the whole world. The spiritual wickedness in high places promote heaven in eternity. The Most High promised paradise, the Garden of Eden. Israelites, you must use discernment to recognize the affairs of the Most High. If you allow the truth to set you free, you will be able to differentiate the kingdom of the Most High from the kingdom of darkness. We can no longer allow ourselves to be deceived by religious falsehoods. The time have come for all people to come out of her. Seek the Most High for yourself. We all should strive to be a part of the marriage of the Lamb to inherit his kingdom. Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. All that is in the heaven and in the earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord. And thou art exalted as head above all. Both riches and honor come of thee. And thou reignest over all. And in thine hand is power and might. And in thine hand it is to make great and to give strength unto all. Now therefore, our God, we thank thee and praise thy glorious name.